Hi, I'm Greg. Welcome to Affect Studio. I'm here to compare magnet types in P90 and humbucking pickups. Manufacturers often advertise the magnet formulation as a selling point in describing the tone of their pickups. Alnico 5 is the most common, followed by Alnico 2. More recently, Alnico 3 and 4 are seeing use in pickups that are said to be more historically correct. What difference do they make and does it matter? I'm going to swap magnets in the same pickups so we are minimizing the variables. The only change will be the magnets. Let's start with the Bridge P90. Here's the neck pickup. I've read descriptions of the various magnet types from pickup manufacturers and pickup parts suppliers and know what the different formulations are supposed to contribute to the overall sound. Until we hear them in the same pickup, it doesn't really tell us much though. Fortunately, it's relatively simple to swap the bar magnets in Gibson style pickups. This wouldn't be possible with vintage Fender type pickups as the coil is wound directly onto the magnets. This has still been a huge amount of work though, way more time consuming than comparing capacitors or speakers or anything else I've done. So this is the middle position, so both pickups. You'll notice I have short and long Alnico 4 magnets. I've seen descriptions on parts supplier sites attributing the length of magnets with fairly significant tonal changes, so I wanted to hear if there was anything in it. I could have tried different lengths for the other magnet types, but swapping five types of magnet was enough already. While it would be interesting, I'm not quite that insane, and this will be enough information to take in as it is. I will add timestamps to the video so you can directly compare the clips. Let's hear them with some drive.
The P90s I'm using are ones that I wound. Unlike my Les Paul Special, where the pickups were very uneven and I needed to replace them, the ones in this, which are supposed to be the same as the Special, were great. I just made these to see if mine sounded any different. I also made mine with a coil tap, so I have a push-pull switch on the tone controls for a slight boost. The guitars are made to measure 54 Les Paul, figured maple instead of the gold top, and a slimmer 59 style neck. I was about to say let's hear some humbuckers, but it's only one pickup, so let's hear a humbucker with multiple magnets. Here's the bridge pickup. I'm using my 2022 Gibson Original Collection 61SG. I removed the covers to make it easier to access the magnets. I know some people believe the covers change the tone. I can't comment on that other than saying that I read an interview with Seth Lover, who developed Gibson humbuckers, where he said that gold covers are the only ones that affect the tone. I did notice an increase in noise without the covers, so I definitely do shield them. With all these examples, I've attempted to keep the parts I'm playing as simple as possible, and obviously tried to be as consistent with the playing as I could. As you've already heard, it definitely isn't perfect. 
I'd like a guitar playing robot for these occasions for maximum consistency, but wasn't able to develop one in time. I've long been fascinated by the number of manufacturers who claim to have the most authentic version of a PAF humbucker, as none of them sound the same, which I believe is actually correct. After all these years, the pickup experts still can't agree on what was used in vintage Gibson pickups. I think in truth, Gibson used whatever they could get, and it varied. After using Alnico 5 since the early 60s, Gibson started using Alnico 2 for their attempts at vintage correct 50s models like the Burst Bucker. The custom bucker was supposed to be even more authentic and uses Alnico 3. It seems that Alnico 4 is currently considered to be the closest to the originals, and Gibson just uses them in their super expensive Collector's Edition 59 models. I saw one part supplier saying the late 50s originals were Alnico 4, but not the same formulation as current Alnico 4. Personally, I don't really care about being vintage correct, I just want to sound as good as I can. I have a couple of guitars that I really like, but wonder if a slight change in the voice of the pickups might make them a little closer to the sound in my head. That's the sound in my head by the way, as opposed to the voices. The voices tell me to do insane things like compare pickup magnets. I'm using the stock Gibson 60s burst buckers in the SG. They use Alnico 5 magnets, which I believe is correct for the period.
Burst buckets have mismatched coils like the vintage ones, where one coil has more windings than the other due to inaccurate counters. Along with using Alnico 5 instead of Alnico 2, I believe they also swapped which coil was hotter for the 60s version, but I can't tell you which way they went. Now if you don't hear the Alnico 3 example in the next section, the issue is clearly with you. I couldn't possibly have forgotten to record it. So there they are, we made it. There are definite differences, but all sound good. I saw one supplier saying that Alnico 3 was a terrible choice for humbuckers, but was good for P90s. Apparently way too weak for humbuckers. I definitely didn't hear that. Did you have any favourites? I regret not getting any ceramic magnets. That would have been interesting. Oh well, next time. No, wait, no. Someone else can do that. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful. And um, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.